Hey, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. I'm Natalie McClatchy, your host, and today we are looking at the external exams in Queensland from 2021, General Maths Paper 2. And this is the complex paper, and we're going to be looking at a question on financial mathematics today. I know this is a lot of people's least liked subject, and it's a complex question. Let's have a look at it. Question 3 was worth 5 marks. Joe contributes $2,500 per quarter to an annuity earning 3.6% per annum, compounding quarterly. At the end of four years, Joe makes a one-off extra contribution of $10,000 and continues with the regular quarterly contributions. Determine the value of the annuity at the end of six years to the nearest dollar. Now, here's what I recommend. Pause the video here, give yourself a five minute time limit, see if you can solve the problem all by yourself. Then put the video back on again and I'll take you through the solution. I'm going to use Polya's C plan do check model today to solve this problem and we're going to start by looking at some of the key information from this question. The first word that jumped out to me was the word annuity. So let's have a quick reflection on what we know about annuities. Annuities are a type of investment where we pay into that investment a regular amount, a contribution. We can see that word in the actual problem there as well. And we also know that annuities are compounded and we can see the word compounded there as well. So because it's an annuity, we know that we've got a choice of two different formulas to use and we'll come back to those in a moment when we're planning the problem and how to solve it. Some of the key information is all of these numbers about um, the different variables of the annuity, how much is being paid in with that regular payment, um, how much the interest rate is, which we'll need to convert to a quarterly rate how many payments there are all together, and how many years there were. And then we've got this other one-off contribution of $10,000 sort of right in the middle of the investment, which just complicates things a little bit more. We'll have to give that some thought. Okay, so I would suggest that I'm a visual person, so I like to draw like a quick sketch about what's going on here. So I've just drawn a quick little sketch just to demonstrate to you what's happening. So we're putting $2,500 in every quarter for six years. You can see that there's a break in the middle where $10,000 goes in. Now it's very tempting to um, work out the value of the investment at the end of four years after putting in that $2,500 every quarter and then to add $10,000 to the balance and then to try and work out the amount at the end of that time. The complicated thing about doing that is that your formula for an annuity doesn't allow you to have a starting principle. You'll know it's all about the monthly contribution. So it doesn't consider the principle at all. So if you break it up into four years and then try and add 10,000, you're going to get stuck. The best way to approach this problem is to treat the annuity component, the regular contribution, separate from the $10,000. So that contribution that you are contributing to $2,500 four times a year, that will um, go for six straight years as though it's uninterrupted. The extra 10,000 that she puts in the bank is also going to be compounded, but it's going to be compounded not as an annuity, but just as regular compound interest. So we're going to break the investment into two different parts. Okay, so firstly, as part of our planning as well, we need to think about the right formula to use for the annuity. So here's our choices from Queensland's formula sheet. And you need to think about which one's the right one. Now, um, if you're smart, you've memorized that the first one is future value, the second one is present value. But a lot of people get stuck after that and not sure what to do next. Well, if you are putting money in, you are adding to the annuity. So it's positive going in plus going into the account. And that's how I remember it. That means you're going to use a positive index, which means we use the future value formula that has a positive power. That's the way I remember it. If I was taking money out of the annuity on a regular basis, I'd use the second formula because taking it out is a takeaway negative index. Little tip there. Okay, so we're going to use that first formula there. Okay, now we need to identify some of our variables as well. So we've got our formula. We've got some parts of that formula. We've got M, which is our regular contribution, and we're told that's $2,500 a quarter. We've got the interest rate, which we need to convert to a quarterly interest rate. And this is a step that a lot of people forget. So we're gonna divide that by four and we'll get 0 0.009. Our next step is also the value 
for the number of periods. So it needs to be six years worth. We need to make sure we just treat it separately from that $10,000 and go for six straight years, four times a year makes 24. Now this was our first mark to come up with the INN value correctly. So if you didn't get, um, didn't change the interest rate to a quarterly value, or you used four years, for example, instead of six years, you would have lost this first mark. But they, you would have been allowed what's called follow through marks for the rest of the question. So you'd only be um, penalized once if you've made a mistake at this point. Okay, so now we're gonna do the problem. We're gonna substitute it into our formula. So we've put the variables into the formula and it's always a good idea to work that out in small steps. I always like to do on my calculator um, 1.009 um, to the power of 24 first. And so remember, you've got to use your order of operations, BOMDAS. Okay, now if we've actually substituted into the right formula, we get another mark. If, for example, you got your variables correct, but you substituted it into the present value formula, you would lose a mark in this part of the question, but you'd be allowed follow through marks for the rest of the problem. So you've got a 50-50 chance of picking the right formula, and if you get it wrong, you lose a mark, but you could still get four out of five marks, which is still pretty good success for a question like this. Okay, so I like to break it down a little bit further and just show my working. You probably don't need to show every single step here. You could do some of this on your calculator, but it's always a good idea just so that you're going when you're checking your work, just to check things as well. So when we've worked that out, we work out that that value of just the annuity component was $66,000 approximately at the end of six years. So we've done half the problem. Okay, now we need to work out the compounding effect on that extra contribution, the $10,000, and it's only in the bank for two years. So we're gonna use the regular compound interest formula. Um, it's not an annuity, it's just a lump sum being compounded under the same terms. So we've stated our formula, We've got the same variables, except the only thing that's really changed is our principal is 10,000. Interest rate remains the same as per the annuity, but our amount of time is eight periods because it's two years quarterly. So let's substitute that into the formula and we've earned our third mark now for substituting into the right rule. Um, it would possibly be tempting to maybe try and do this um, as an iterative function on your calculator, but you do need to actually use the formula and show what you're doing. Okay, so we just work that out a little bit further and we get that that value of the $10,000 contribution is worth $10,743.09 at the end of the, four, um, the six years. Okay, so we can see down in our diagram now, we've got these two amounts that they're worth at the end. So now we need to add the two together. We're gonna to find the total value now to the, two, the nearest dollar. So we add the two together and if you showed your working that you were actually finding the sum of two numbers, you would be um, given a mark. And once again, if you got one of the numbers wrong, you could get still follow through marks here because you've added the two numbers you found together. And to make a statement at the end where it's rounded to the nearest dollar, I guarantee you a lot of students in their panic reading the question actually didn't round and they gave it to two decimal places because that's kind of what we're used to. So it's always a good idea to have a look and see what the question's actually asking of you. So with that correct rounding at the end, a total value that was worth your fifth mark. So first mark was stating your variables um, correctly, making sure you converted your rate and converted your period of time into quarterly. That was our first mark. Second mark was choosing the right annuity rule and substituting into it correctly. So there was two parts to that one. The third one, was um, picking the right rule for uh, the $10,000 contribution. The fourth mark was adding the two together and coming up with a total amount. And the fifth mark was for giving it um, probably with a dollar sign and that correct rounding. Well, did you find this helpful today? I sure hope so. I love helping everybody. And if you did, why not tell somebody? Jump on that social media and let your friends and teachers know. Tell us in the comments that you found it helpful. And that way other people looking to see if they want to watch the video will know if it's worth their time. Um, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, you can hit that notifications button and that way you'll always know when you've got the next video ready to watch. And you can follow us on social media too. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Fun things there, competitions, memes, um, different announcements that you don't want to miss out on. If you've got questions, the feed on underneath in the comments is not the best place for it. It's kind of hard to explain. But if you've got questions about the video, you can send those to mccutchymass at yahoo.com. 
don't forget, we've also got a free resource um, on how to choose the right formula for annuities questions. So if you jump into our investments and loans playlist, you'll see in there that we have a presentation, it's a three slide presentation where I take you through this big flow chart of all the decisions you've got to make. Is it an annuity? Is it compounded? Is it this? Is it that? Now, if you want to access that free resource, all you have to do is email me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com and say, I want that flow chart, please. And we'll get that straight to you as soon as we can. Well, thank you so much for watching today. You've been watching McClutchy Mass and I'm Natalie McClutchy. Do stay tuned for our next video, which will be on question four. Have a wonderful day.